Hi, my name is Sarah Falgenhauer, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a cute little galaxy or space scene out of watercolors and cut paper. There are a few things that you need. Uh, first of all, you need watercolor paper, uh, kind of a rough tooth to it. You need two kinds of brushes. You need the initial brush for the color and then a bigger brush to blend the colors together. Um, this brush is my favorite brush of all time. It is a one inch brush from Utrecht. It's a wash brush and it's really good for many watercolor things. And this is just to blend everything together. Next what you're going to need is two different colors. The colors that I've chosen to blend into each other are cerulean blue and violet. Uh, these are Cotman Windsor and Newton watercolors and I don't have a palette with me today so I'm just using a CD case uh, with my two watercolors already on it. So what you're going to do first, oh you also need a glass of water, it is watercolor after all. So what you're going to do first is you're going to get your, your bigger brush wet. And what I do, I think this makes it blend easier and just makes everything go a little bit more smoothly is to get this brush wet and then get your paper a little bit wet. You don't want it to be soaking. Um, ideally, if you were doing this, your watercolor paper would be stretched on a board. Um, I did not have that done, which means the paper is going to curl a little bit, but that's okay for demonstration purposes. But if you're doing this for real, for like a piece of artwork, you're definitely going to want to stretch it and make sure that the paper doesn't curl up. So basically what I've done is I've just gotten my surface a little bit wet so that the colors glide on a little bit easier. And now what we're going to do is take our one inch wash brush, get that wet, and then you're going to start to go into your colors and add water to them. I'm going to start with purple and then move into blue. So the purple is going to be on my left side. And you're going to start far end of the spot that you got wet. I'm going to make this a little bit darker so that the gradient's a little bit more dramatic. You're just going to go up and down, making sure that um, your watercolors are pretty wet. Um, for blending purposes and for gradient purposes, everything works a little bit better with watercolor if it's wet, uh, especially for like big overlying colors. All right, and that's just to start with. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my blue wet. And what I like to do is just like to dip it in the water and then come over and just swirl it around next to the color. So that way I have my pile of unused watercolor and then the color that I just mixed so I can grab as much as I want from it and go onto the surface. And now at the other end of the area I got wet, I'm gonna put my blue is a little diluted so I'm going to put a little bit more of the paint in, a little bit less water. I'm not going to add any more water. <clears throat> and I'm just going to keep layering it until it's a darkness that I like. Okay, so now what we're going to do is with the wash on the brush, it's got a little bit of purple, got a little bit of blue because I just dipped it in the water. You're just going to go in the middle and kind of start to blend the two colors together. And as you can see, the purple's fading a little bit more into the blue, and the blue is stretching all the way to the purple. And then you're taking paint away from the purple side and putting it on the blue side. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken up these two sides to make it a little bit more dramatic, and then we're gonna work in the middle again. I like to go back and forth from the sides to the middle, just so that I make sure it's even and everything looks the way I want it, and I find working at the ends first works pretty well. And you're going to take that purple that you just got on your brush to make the side darker and pull it out into the middle of the gradient so that your purple gradually gets lighter towards the middle when it meets the blue. And I think that looks about good right now for the purple. And now I'm going to go to the blue side just going to get that purple off my brush, get some blue, I'm going to take more of the paint, less of the water, go to the blue side, and that's a lot darker. And then we're going to do the same thing, just start taking the color out towards the middle, and it'll gradually get lighter as you get into the middle, which is good because that's exactly what If you 
you want, you can also go back into your watercolor collection. I have a lot of colors here. You can pick a darker version of each of these two colors to make the dark parts truly darker. Um, and I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to show you guys how that can be achieved. So I'm going to take Ultramarine, which is a darker blue, and put it at the end of the Cerulean blue. As you can see, like the paint is a lot darker. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of that in there. You don't need much watercolor, definitely not. Uh, just a little bit goes a long way. And then I'm going to take the mauve, which isn't darker than the purple, but layered on top of each other, it will create a darker effect. Okay, so now I have those two colors. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I was doing to the edges, but with these two colors. So I'm going to mix it with water, I'm going to start with the blue side. Mix it with a little water. I'm going to on a little because you want this to be darker, that's the purpose. I'm going to just go in. And then it's just a process of blending this in as well to make it look natural, make it look like it started this color, and that they aren't two different colors, but one color that just got darker. And then I'm going to work in the mauve to the purple or the violet. And that looks nice. See, so it's a different color, and they're about equal darkness, but when you add them on top of each other, they create this really nice hue. And you're just going to blend together where they meet. They're going up and down. And I'd say that's about done. Okay, and now for the star part. This is probably the most fun part of the whole thing because you get to splatter ink all over the place. So what you're going to need for this is a brush of really any size, but preferably a brush about this thickness um, works best, I think. And then you're also going to need some sort of white ink. Right here I have Speedball Super Pigmented Acrylic Ink, and I think this works really well. It's really opaque, and I've used it for several star splatterings, and it works really well. So what you're going to do is first of all you're going to want to stand up because sitting down you don't get the right angle for splattering so I'm just going to dip my brush in. You don't want it to be dripping wet but you want it to be wet enough that some stuff will come off. So I'm going to stand up and you're just going to splatter, you need a little more, nothing's going off. You're just going to splatter over, over the gradient. And automatically it's going to look like a galaxy because of the random pattern that it splatters in. You kind of have to use a lot of wrist action to get it off. Um, you could definitely, if you put more ink on the brush, the, um, the stars will be bigger, but I think it looks better when the stars are a little bit smaller, kind of makes it look a little bit more galaxy-y. So I'm going to do it probably just maybe once more, I feel like there's a lot of stars in there already. It also gets all over the place. I think I just got some on my face. <laughs> so beware. <laughs> all right. And that is looking pretty good. If you want to go in and put specific stars places, you can use the very tip of this brush and just make a little dot, a little dot, wherever you want it. You could make maybe like a constellation like this if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna go in and add a few by myself. I think that looks pretty good and it's really quick too. It's also the most fun part because it's a little messy and you get to fling paint everywhere and I think that's cool. Okay so I'm gonna hold this up to you guys because it's kind of hard to see with the light but it looks like you got a little fun galaxy stars going on. And then you have your next step, which is adding in the little planets, and um, I'm choosing to put in a little rocket ship into my galaxy. And I have my sky and my galaxy drying up here because it's going to take a little bit of time to be able to actually apply stuff to it. So I've pre-drawn a little rocket ship, a planet that's probably Saturn, and then another little random planet down here. And what we're going to use to color these 
is some watercolor pencils. Um, you can definitely do this with anything. You can do it with markers, you can do it with colored pencils, but I'm gonna try to keep with the theme of watercolor and use some watercolor pencils. And the best way to use these, or the way that I like to use them, are coloring it in the way I want and then adding the water to it just to kind of blend it out, make it look like actual watercolor. So I'm gonna start with the little ship and I'm just gonna color that in gray, but I'm gonna make it a little gradient, make it a little fancy. Somebody's car alarm is going off. And the water can really stretch these pencils, which I think is really nice. It's definitely a hybrid of drawing and painting, which I really like. Okay, so as, I'll show you in a second, as you can see, I've colored in the back, or the sides of this with the gray watercolor pencil. And now I'm gonna take the same brush that I used, hang on, it's all over here, the same brush that I used for splattering the galaxy, and I'm just gonna, cause it's the right size for this kind of smaller work, and I'm just gonna paint right on that pencil. And it's gonna blend everything out. Eventually, with all the layers and everything, this is going to look like a really cute rocket ship. But that's what it looks like once you add water to it. So I'm just going to finish these up and then I'll meet you back when I'm going to cut them out. Okay, so I've colored in all of my little planets and my little rocket ship with the watercolor pencils and outlined them in just a Sharpie pen to give them a more crisp look and make them look a little bit more cartoony. So now I'm ready to cut them out and um, I'm just going to cut them with regular scissors and I'm going to leave a little white outline. to ideally glue but all I could find was scotch tape them on in the uh, just wherever you want them to go so I'm gonna kind of just find a placement that I like and I think that looks pretty good and so I'm just gonna do the little loop thing with the tape and just tape them on ideally you'd have some sort of glue uh, but I just couldn't find any which isn't good but work with what you have Okay, so I'm just going to tape these on in the places that I had them placed. This is a lot quicker than glue. Okay. And then you have this. And it's adorable. But you got all this extra paper around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out my little space scene just to make it look more finished. We don't need all that extra white space. All right, and there you have it. A little space galaxy scene that you made all by yourself, completely with watercolors. Ching!